Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales. I know you've heard about it. I know you might have heard some good things and bad things. You might have read some of the reviews. <laughs> you might have written a review. Uh, if you have not, please go leave us a review. This is season numero seis, episode number 67. Drops July 2nd, 2021. I have a new country music single called Freedom, dropping Sunday, 4th of July. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. You know what I'm talking about? I'm also a stand-up comedian, and I am on tour. Ontario, California, you guys sold it out. All my patriots! I will see you there July 14th. We had to add a show. Next day, July 15th, Oxnard. July 16th, Waco. July 17th, Midland. July 25th, just added, Phoenix. Mm. All my patriots in beautiful Arizona, Maricopa County. Everybody out there recounting votes. I expect to see you at the show, Freedom of Speech Tour. August 11th, Irvine, California. August 18th, San Jose, California. We should be doing forensic audits everywhere we go. You're not lying. You know I'm talking about eight, uh, 827. August 27th through the 29th, Denver, Colorado. September 9th through the 11th, El Paso, the 915. You know, the border where Kamala just came mm-hmm. from. Uh, Brea, California, September 15th, Addison, Texas. October 7th through the 10th, San Antonio. October 14th through the 16th, H-Town. November 5th through the 7th. Yes, sir. Man, I had, a, I had a good phone call with Sam Tripoli yesterday. Yeah? He was schooling me about the art of podcasting. Okay, I love this. Yeah, he was like, man, what you got going on with premium content? I said, look here, brother. This is what we got going on. We about to do an exclusive Zoom show where the patrons could, could zoom in like motherfucking uh, 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 spacely space sprockets. You know what I'm saying? Like the Jetsons. See, you're too young to understand this shit, young man. Over my head. But uh, we want to do a, a whole new Zoom show like the last Thursday of every month. You could heat up some tamales, pop a top on a cold one, and join in on the podcast conversation. Um, you know, some more details to come on that. Join the Tia, the Tamal Intelligence Agency, and support this podcast and our freedom of speech today. Patreon.com forward splat. Pff, forward, forward splash. splash. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm ready for the beach, man. Shout out Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Um, Sam made me a little bit nervous okay. about Patreon and stuff like that. He said... he the said Censorship? The, yeah. He said the reason he's not on Patreon, he's on a, another website called Rockfin, mm-hmm. and he's trying to get, get us over there. Um, but he said that, uh, I guess for Patreon, you have to use Vimeo or YouTube mm-hmm. f- to upload videos <clears> or whatever. <throat> he's like... That's too many bosses. You might upset. He he said I just could no longer have my conspiracy stuff up there. So tengo miedo, way. Yeah. Uh, because you know this is a day and age where a scientist and a doctor um, can't even get on YouTube and talk about data and science and hypotheses and questions and curiosity and you know they you know the the, the big tech oligarchs. You know what I'm talking about. That's what I call them. That's exactly what they are. The big tech oligarchs would just kick you off, deplatform you, shut you down. But, you know, I've been around since before big tech. That's how old I am. So if we got to take it back to the pulga, we will. Can you imagine just doing a live podcast at the pulga? That's, that's all that's at the booth, just us talking. I mean, if we think about it, y'all, if we get all the way deep platform, that's what it's going to have to come down to. You're going to have to be at the placita with a speaker, and then the cops got to come and kick you out, and then you can't get the word out. Now you got to pass out flyers and shit like hey here's my rss feed you know i'm on the am radio station on uh what is it called public access yeah ta cabron. i mean the way i used to see youtube is like that in a way was a new form of public access but now it's like state sanctioned curated media it's true it's kind of sad and that's why we really need you guys to continue to support our freedom of speech with a subscription based business model patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales sas i like that you mind moving your breakfast bowl sorry bro it, lo- it looks bad <laughs> it I looks know. weird the coffee's fine but the bowl is like man what's in that uh these breakfast? motherfuckers out here snacking <laughs> well because the trainer kicked my ass um really really kicked my ass i'm just i'm just hitting all kind of plateaus and walls uh however i mentioned to him that he's on the list of guests potential guests for when we do a like health and fitness type, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a chingo chat episode or a whole new show where we want to talk about things like might want to have a therapist on. Mm-hmm. We might want to have a, um, a a doctor on to talk about testosterone replacement therapy, uh, talk about stress, you know, um, just 
all kind of optimization. Yeah, a variety show of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so hot. I'm still running hot. You're hot, yeah, huh? That fucking workout kicked my ass, y'all. Chino hits, <clears throat> Chino hits me up. Chino hits me up like, hey, I uh, just got home from the gym. 15 minutes, uh, actually 11 minutes before we're going to record. And I was like, you know what? That's all right. I'll get gas, drive around. I, need, I wanted to get a drink, which they didn't have a drink that I wanted. Uh, just give you some time. You know, we can't have you just rushing in here and for I the ate workout. Twice. Yeah, and I ate twice. Pay twice. Yeah, I had a little omelet earlier. And I said, step no marro. And I had to come back, back door, with a little bowl of oatmeal. Got to do what a, you a PBJ do. oatmeal. I put a little bit of peanut butter and jelly. Is that what that was? Yeah, it had it a little good as PBJ, hell. PBJ, man. But you yeah. know you're on the road. You gotta gotta make them gains. I'm trying to tighten up, man. I'm trying to tighten up. I'm, I'm not gonna do tortillas de harina. Um, we gotta hold each other accountable. And that's for the chingo chat after this episode because we got we got some questions about it inside the Patreon from the yeah. uh, questions from the TIA TIA, and we're gonna start the challenge uh, Monday. So when that when that episode drops, we're gonna start our uh, steps and hydration challenge. I got my watch set up, so I'm gonna be ready for your step challenge. The CCP hacked into that, by the way. People they, people don't know this. Yeah, they they yeah they I'm, they are ready. NSA watching Tucker Carlson. You know they're watching us. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not ready for the hydration challenge, but one step at a time. <laughs> we will get there. Anyway, more talk about that on Chingo Chats. Shout out to all the patrons that get access to all the premium content. Yeah. Sus. So, man, what we got in the news today? You want to start from the top here? Hey. So we have our questions from the TIA that um, we didn't get to on the last RPT. Mm-hmm. And they're at the they're at the end of the show, but I'm trying to think how do we want to how do we want to you know oh the Q and A yeah the, okay. yeah the Q and A the questions we have our very first video submission oh yeah yeah Hell yeah so do we want to start with that stuff because we got to remember too the people listening right now on iTunes and Spotify y'all are getting the teasers which are about the first 15 minutes so do we want to give them you know the fun stuff that we're going to talk about at the end mm. or do we want to just leave that for the exclusive patrons and start with our uh, topics and news what's in the media what mm. do you think we're torn man usually I like to peak people's curiosity and keep them on the hook you know what i'm saying I like agree. like y'all gotta wait out but at the same time man we trying to we trying to grow the, the podcast so how about this let's dive into this uh list we have here and then at some point we'll mosey on over that was my plan too you know great minds think alike you gotta mosey on over gotta mosey on over first show in the media today you know, that's what we do here at RPT, man. We give you the hottest takes, you know, RPT, sasputo. Uh, the Biden White House gives support to Gwen Berry, uh, the Olympian, right? She's the hammer thrower. I never knew that was an event. I didn't either. But she threw that hammer. <clears throat> and I've been known to throw that hammer, too, uh, from time to time. And she turned her back while the national anthem was playing. Yeah. So I want a little bit of context. Has this been fact-checked? Was it, was it like... No, I wasn't turning my back. You know, they caught me off guard, and it, that wasn't at the same time, or that was right before I went up there. <clears throat> no, she was she was upset. She said that she was pissed and feels that they set her up. Set her up how? Uh, that she wasn't expecting to have, which is, th- th- that's how it sounded so dumb, because people were like, you didn't think that when you're on the, um, the winner's block, you know, or the finishing block or whatever, because she got third, I think, right? And those two chubbier white chicks got first and second, yeah. that they're not going to play your national anthem. So she just kind of turned her back, you know, to, to the media, basically, where the crowd was and didn't face the flag. So her excuse is she was mad at herself for losing. She wasn't necessarily mad at the uh, flag. No, 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 no. So she, she said, I'm mad at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's she, mad at the end. Yeah, she got bamboozled that they played it because right after that, she put her activist athlete shirt over her um, head. Yeah. Well, you know what? Bless her heart. She's probably young, misled. Um, you got to understand what young people are up against and old people, too, because... You know, uh, about a year and a half ago, shit, I don't know, man. I ask myself this all the time. Like, all the stuff that we're seeing now, because I feel like it's accelerated. In 2020, I feel like so much shit came to light. Like, they're just mashing the gas on so many agendas that I feel like it was inevitable that I would have pumped the brakes and been like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me see what this Trump guy talking about. Because the left is fucking going extreme. Gwen Perry, by the way, she's uh, 32. She's not young. Okay. Well, like, like like I said. But, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because you posted that uh, letter that you've been talking about yeah. posting for a long ass and time. And that was like, what, four years ago maybe? That's a good segue though, yeah. Like, yeah. expand on that. What, what, do, you, so, what do you mean? What, do you, what so are you talking about? What I was saying is I try to cut people some slack, people like Gwen Berry, because uh, uh, she's African-American, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know her background. I don't know where she grew up, how she grew up, what schools she went to. What kind of mentors and people she had in her life. Or lack thereof. I, yeah, I don't know anything about her. I don't know if she served in the military, if she went to college or not. 
I have no idea about her lived truth and her experience, right? So as a patriot, of mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. I'm like, nah, cuz, you can't do that, you know? However, I'll be honest, man, when, uh, when Colin Kaepernick first started with his little kneeling and stuff, I was kind of torn. I'm just like, hmm, it's kind of disrespectful, but at the same time, you kind of have the right to, to protest a mm-hmm. little bit. And, you know, he was pretty eloquent. He'd do an all right job of trying to explain as best as he could, like, well, it's because things aren't fair, blah, 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 blah. And I feel like we're bombarded. The mainstream media, the mainstream narrative, you have everybody from your Stephen Colbert's, your late night comedy people, The View, CNN, Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, fucking Jorge Ramos, Univision, Telemundo, LeBron James, Nickelodeon, everybody, Nike, all the, everybody and a mom are pushing this uh, Biden won fair and square. The virus came from bat soup. <clears throat> you know, ivermectin doesn't work. Yeah. John McAfee didn't kill himself. <laughs> Buildings collapse on their own. Um, you're a fucking crazy conspiracy theorist if you believe that we should all stand for the flag. So, pobrecita, wey, neta. Like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck she's thinking. Like, I would like to hear... I would like to hear her say like, all right, well, this is why I'm upset is because X, Y, Z is because police brutality. Sure. And then maybe somebody, I don't know if Candace Owens has the juice to, to red pill people, but then maybe somebody could be like, um, could we talk about the data on that? Could we talk about, let's just say, um, you know, BLM as an organization. Uh, could we, could we go over cultural Marxism real quick? You know what I mean? Like, mm. I don't know what it's going to take to educate people like Gwen Berry and have them look at things different. Like, wait a minute, this is the best fucking country. We do have, you know what I mean? This is the greatest experiment. You know, this the, we got the Constitution. It's it's freed so many people from all kind of persecution. You know, going, going on that same <clears throat> subject or in that same vein with the letter that you posted, it kind of shows that you can't really, you're not going to convince a lot of these people of anything. You, there's no argument that's going to be had or debate that's going to be held that's going to change their perspective. You have to, come to that conclusion yourself. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And it's a, it's people that can't, like Candace Owens, or maybe obviously what we're doing, that's going to maybe just slowly, just kind of like, you know, they're going to get the tip of these red pills from time yeah. to time, whether mm-hmm. it's their friends, their inner circles, the media, or alternative media, not the not the terrestrial media. Yeah. And they're eventually going to just have to come over, you know, whether it's at 32, like she is, or 42, like some people are, not necessarily just you, yeah. but, uh, mm-hmm. but and that's just kind of the process. I'm 42 of in August, Rob. <laughs> Are you really? In August. I oh, turned yeah, 42 in August, man. What you thought it was, Ken Folk? I thought it was 41 this year. No, no, I'm already 41. Damn. You know all right, that's all right, man. It's, OG, it's but, but how you feel on the inside. Yeah, that's for sure. Don't let the kindness fool you, homie. Yeah, I thought you were going to start dying your beard. No, I think that looks kind of weird. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It's all right. I already broke up with my barber. I already had to ghost my barber. Yeah. Like, I had to be like, hey, fam, um, man, you know, I don't really be tripping, dog. You know, I love, look, man, look. My wife bought me this little bullshit Norelco. She wanted me to shave my own head at home. You know I wouldn't even trip. But I'ma still get my beard done by you, homie. And then my wife started doing that for me. And I'm like, I just start ghosting them, dog. So anyway. This is how nice Chingo is. He just sets up a reoccurring payment to that barber, but doesn't get any services done. Yeah. Very, very you're generous. A nice guy. I'm a generous guy. <laughs> so anyway so anyway you're saying uh 40 yeah. people that are 42 or just people in general like like they're not gonna we're not gonna change their minds and you, you might be able to we might be able to but i think what we all have to you know come to the conclusion of or acceptance of is that because america is so goddamn great uh-huh and you can do all these what we consider stupid things like turn your back to the flag burn flags talk shit about the entire system that is you know america um i mean that's what they get to do that's why so many people, you know, shed blood and died and, you know, go through their own sacrifices to make sure that we get to do whatever we want. Yeah. And it's not like, it's, I don't accept it. I don't think it's cool, but it's what it is. It's what it is, dog. Yeah. A lot of people haven't traveled. A lot of people don't know, like, how good they have it. Some people don't know, like, man, there's certain shit you can't do. You know, other people's currency isn't like our, I mean, our dollar, I feel like, is in peril. But you know, other people's rights and freedoms and currencies. And Mexico has one petroleum option, Pemex. Mexico has one electricity option and it's high as fuck. People like don't even run the AC, bro. Cause yeah. We can't afford that shit. Um, you know, you don't have freedom of speech. A lot of places, uh, a lot, well, arguably in the United States, they're chipping away at that. <laughs> and even in, in other countries, 
you only have like state sanctioned internet like you're only going to see certain things arguably in the states is slowly dwindling in that direction you know with big tech and, and all that bullshit uh going back to my letter to donald trump mm-hmm. that shit is cringe as fuck it's cringe as fuck right where's the lighter bro the, the um oh, where's the ceremony twin candle? candle company yes twincandlecode.com if you guys want to buy online get you some uh, i'm gonna let you do the honors thank you thank you so i wrote this cringe as fuck letter after i got butt hurt when when i thought donald trump called all mexicans racist uh rapists however he wasn't talking about all mexicans he was talking about the rapist mexicans and whoever else is coming through that southern border raping people right now. and wanting to rape right now so let's not be naive and assume that trump was lying there are no rapists coming through uh get your head out your ass um i mean there's already rapists in america who's to say there ain't other one, other others coming in so i wrote this little letter and uh bien mamon way todo mamon the way i ended it i was like from the bottom of my brown heart <laughs> <laughs> todo mamon how <laughs> cringe what from the bottom of my brown heart what were you thinking when you decided to because you had to have said to yourself you might have been having a sip of your sutter home wine why, why didn't my girl stop me Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Why didn't this <laughs> fucking cold, sometimes cold-hearted of a G who has like hypervision that's like, we'll tell you how it is sometimes, didn't say, chingo bling, put that shit down. Well, think about it, man. I was believing The View, CNN, uh, mainstream narrative. Um, all I was hearing was Orange Man Bad, this man called all Mexicans rapists, and I'm supposed to be one of the voices you know what I'm saying? Or the brown community. So you and Johnny Legs, me and Johnny Leguizamo, uh, Latinx. <laughs> este. So <clears throat> at the time, I was being genuine, and I felt like this could be a rally cry. This could be something that people can read and hopefully feel invigorated and and for morale, kind of like, hey, don't it don't matter what they call us. If anything, this should wake us up, and we should have a game plan, and we should unify and see how we could bring some positivity out of this yeah so i had good intentions however once i realized that the fucking news is fake all these narratives are false i saw these hoaxes debunked and i learned that today's present day border situation is not something you want to promote you do not want to continue to promote they can't deport us all because all it does is endanger women and kids gets people sex trafficked and raped and it's just a shit show right it's not good no bueno for nobody it really ain't. Um, probably a select few, you know what I'm saying? People that are really escaping legit persecution mm-hmm. and, and they have a real good case for refugee status or something. So so obviously case by case basis. Um, but think about think about what my mind had to have gone through to basically let everybody know, all right, look, dog, you have a moral obligation to walk all this shit back Admit that you were wrong. Keep an open mind to different political parties. To uh, admit that the Democrats haven't really done shit for us. It's just been a fucking dog and pony show. Um, think about what my mind had to been going through to to know I might get canceled. I'm gonna get a ton of pushback. However, I have a moral obligation to be honest, to be transparent, and hopefully to inform others that like, hey, dog, I was I was blind too. You know what this reminds me of? It's kind of random, <clears throat> but uh, in 19, I think it was like 1949 or 59, Volvo was a manufacturer that created the seatbelt. Like they created the three-point seatbelt, the one that goes, you know, through the click. lap, over, and click, right? Mm-hmm. They chose to not patent it and keep it open for everybody to use. Mm. And that was one of those things and, and one of those times where the moral morals, you know, superseded profit and superseded what you could do with control over something as powerful as that three-point belt system. Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about is kind of similar. It's just like, what happened to the times of like, let's keep moral ahead of, you know, power and persuasion and whatever else, you know, the money grab, I guess. But uh, it's less and less a thing now. More people are like, you know, snakes <sighs> in the in the weeds. However, I will say this though. I feel like some of the extreme shit that the left is doing mm-hmm. is so lame, cringe, detrimental to the country, detrimental to uh, minorities, brown community, black community. Uh, it's so divisive, a lot of this rhetoric, that 
I have zero fucking regrets. No, good. zero regrets. Good. Stuart's like, I cannot, I, I'm not going to sit up here and put Latinx in my bio and sit up here and walk y'all off a cliff uh, talking about, we got to stay birthing people now, y'all. And, you know, I, I haven't even put on any of the, the topics for the past couple of weeks. Ilan Omar, you know, one of the representatives, I forgot what state. From the Jihad Squad. She's out of uh, Min- Min- uh, Minneapolis? Min- Minnesota. Minnesota. Sorry. Um, she keeps doubling down on this whole anti-Semitic comments she keeps making. So yesterday she was on CNN with oh, hey, Jake Tapper, man, that guy's face. My man. She uh, tripled down basically on some more anti-Semitic kind of talk where she was saying that like basically these like, her Jewish allies in, in, in government or in politics makers they haven't been allies in the fight for injustice and jake tapper's just sitting there he's just like i think he's jewish i wouldn't be surprised i think he's jewish uh-huh. and the thing is that like that, that like people are watching cnn and they're watching Elon omar and the reason i don't bring it up is just because it's so dumb like those some ideas are so dumb that you have to let them just die on their merits of stupidity Hmm. I wonder who she means specifically. Like, there's a couple of Jewish Congress people that. It, does it matter though when yeah. you're talking to CNN and supposedly this large audience of the United States is watching and you keep saying like they haven't been in the they're, they're, they're not ratings. allies they're not allies in the fight for injustice is the Jews the Jews aren't even aren't if it is two allies. people huh. allies for the fight of injustice. I wonder what injustice specifically like what what Ilhan it might yeah it might be more. Ilhan baby <laughs> boo boo holla at me Did she she came from Somalia. Now she's in Congress. It might be worse that she didn't specify. To just leave a blanket statement, it's like, okay, let's name four or five of them off the top of our heads. It sounds like she's picking on Jewish people. She, and, yeah, and it's like a repetitive theme here. It's really weird. I don't know. Maybe that's why they call them the Jihad Squad. Um, MTG, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. Boy, she is a boss. She's a character. She's a boss. I love her, bro. I love that woman. For one, she's the one that called them the Jihad Squad, number one. <laughs> I didn't know that. She does not play around. She used to run a construction company in Georgia. She is America first all the fucking way. She's a patriot and a half. She texted Tucker Carlson and said, hey, um, we're discussing what the NSA is doing to you and how they're spying on you. And she said, I have a message for the NSA, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it here in this text message. Uh. <laughs> She's like, hey, FBI and NSA, you're on notice. And I was like, damn. damn. Gangster. Come on, man. Gangster. That's hilarious. She's a fucking boss. She also gave out the phone number to this uh, National Children's Museum in D.C. Mm. She gave the phone number to the lady that runs it because on their website, they have a whole bunch of critical race theory type cultural Marxist bullshit that they're teaching these kids. And they're funded off of taxpayer money, grant money, like public dollars. You know, you're hard on earned dollars. And we have the right to know what they're teaching these kids. Right. It's supposed to be science, uh, tech, engineering, arts, and math. STEAM. It's supposed to be that shit. But uh, instead... They're pushing a, a whole bunch of fucking Marxist bullshit. So if you're not up on MTG, she's pretty boss. And um, of course, they try to paint her as this caricature of a crazy Q, QAnon Trumper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, shit, I, I love what she's doing, man. Here, so this is, uh, since we're still on the first topic here, I wanted to play the video for you. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Just kind of get your feedback on, um, Jen, on uh, Jen talking about what's her face, Quinn Barry. This weekend, Gwen Barry, who hopes to represent the United States as an Olympian on the hammer throwing uh, events, won a bronze medal at the trials, and then she turned her back on the flag while the anthem played. Does President Biden think that is appropriate behavior for someone who hopes to represent Team USA? Well, uh, Peter, I, I haven't spoken to the president specifically about this, uh, but I know he's incredibly proud to be an American uh, and has great respect for the anthem and all that it represents, especially for our, our men and women serving in uniform all around the world. He would also say, of course, that part of that pride in our country means recognizing there are moments where we are, as a country haven't lived up to our highest ideals. And it means respecting the right of people granted to them in the Constitution to peacefully protest. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, the left is going to left, man. They, they, she couldn't possibly have said, you know what, Biden don't like it, we don't either. Because then they're like, oh no, oh, no. They're like, oh no, we're going to get like all the minorities and all the uh, social justice warriors and the blue check marks on Twitter. <laughs> In a video where he's like, uh, the, re- the reason Latinx doesn't want to get vaccinated is because they're afraid they'll get the shot and then get deported. 
What? Every little tinks person is an immigrant that needs to be deported? Man, if Trump has said any of the shit he said, Bro, if yeah. Trump had done any of the shit he does, <clears throat> the, the, this bullshit journalist, this is what they do. Um, I think I put it on the what did he said page, I believe. If you go back to December and, and try to find whatever you're looking for, yeah, go ahead. you people that have been listening for a while will remember Chingo and I talking about, you know, this very thing coming to fruition and this guy coming into office and Chingo specifically saying with enthusiasm, this man will be the biggest gaff machine in the history mm. of all presidents. And he has not let us down in that regard. That's the one thing he's not let us down on. Facts. I need y'all to go um, peep old episodes and, and peep game. You arguably you might have gone harder, like you know, uh, late uh, December, early January before you know inauguration and all that. Chingo was going hard in the paint. What do you mean? I was being meaner to Biden. Yeah, maybe. Just raw, just like uh, the way you wrote that letter uh-huh. from your from the, your brown heart. Yeah, from my little brown heart. You went the opposite way and was talking from your black heart. It was yeah. pretty funny. Okay, well I got to be black. <laughs> so so here's a uh, I don't know who. Let me see who this dude works for. Jor- color. Check it out. Jordan Fabian is a White House correspondent for Bloomberg News. Mamon. All right, this is what he this is what he tweeted. Money medio. Check this out. Biden visits the Pearl Ice Cream Parlor in La Crosse, Wisconsin. A reporter suggested he order a rocky road for infra, and he responded, It's been a rocky road, but we're going to get it done. The president ordered cookies and cream and strawberry in a double-dipped sugar cone. And here are some images of him smiling, eating his ice cream. Is that recent? Yeah, this, this motherfucker just tweeted this bullshit. June 29th. That was yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Biden visits the Pearl Ice Cream Parlor in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And they tell you what he ordered. Man, you think they were ever this nice to Trump? Well, we posted that thing yesterday, too, of uh, Dr. Dr. Biden. Mm-hmm. and um, You know they got booed yesterday. At here. Oh, they were here, yeah. yeah. Astros. Yeah. My, si- fan my, s- my sister hit me up. She's like, hey, we're at the Astros game, and uh, uh, Kamala's husband is here, and Jill Biden are here, and they got booed really bad. And I was like, good. I'd have booed him too. <laughs> they gave her a Vogue cover. Moment of silence for that one. The first lady for all a first lady for all of for us. For all. For all of us. Even though Biden has very low approval ratings and one out of ten Democrats believe that there were shenanigans and he's not the legitimate president. I don't know if it was Steve Banner. Somebody was was saying that come like September time, Labor Day time, that he would have the lowest approval rating, I think, in history of presidents. Yeah, he says that he's bleeding political capital, that he's just, you know, people just like, what the fuck is this viejito doing? Like the, the media, too, man, if you notice, they never when they're filming, they never show him walking. Because if you see his gait, like the way he's, he's shuffling, his, yeah. If you see his stride, if you pay attention to someone's gait, as they call it, you know how they how they move their legs when they walk. You can tell if a motherfucker is drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know if they're young, if they got some uh, cognitive decline, like if they're if they, a five star athlete, if they're elderly yeah. and, and stuff like that. So the media is very nice to Biden, and they always cut away. They don't want to show que está medio así. Yeah, he walks like Grandpa Simpson's friend from the old folks home that, st- that yells out, I want some taquitos. And he's just like walking, just kind of shuffling there. I almost feel like he wants to move his arms too when he's doing it. He's stuck out on. It's sad. It is. It is sad. And it's it, sad. we're not. I'm not trying to make fun of it, the situation, but for to have it be ignored by half of, well, supposedly half of the country is just, how do you not? How do you not? This is a, this is a political comedy commentary podcast and we have to call shit out. Yeah, 81 million votes, y'all. So I know it's a meme and a running joke for people to say, I'm still waiting on all my Democrat friends to talk about all the good shit Biden is doing. And I mean, of course, the only thing you hear people say is like, man, he's giving out more money. He's giving out more money. He's printing more money. But what they don't pay attention to is they done, they're, they just committed to print like another 10 to 15 trillion. I gave him 1.9. Hey, hey folks, huh? that's a bargaining chip. For the employees, pay them more. Pay them more. Pay them more. He just falls into his bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> 15, like 10, 15 trillion dollars. They call it uh, infrastructure, uh, family infrastructure. Um, I believe they're about to start paying people. Like if you got a kid that's under six, they're going to get like 3500 a month. And like some other shit for like, I don't know if it's unemployment. I'm like, God damn, some people are going to be making like 
10 to 15, like anywhere from, depending on how many kids and stuff you got, anywhere from like seven grand to motherfucking 15 grand a month. Who's going to go to work? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't read it, but Yahoo News had posted, there was an article about uh, how this infrastructure plan was going to ruin the suburbs, like suburban homes and the homing, the housing market and those areas. And I was like, damn, I really want to read this, but I had to go. Mm. And apparently it's been happening. And now it's just like, he's igniting that fire even faster. So I wonder how they're framing the, the fact that this plan could ruin, you know, the suburbs or homes. I don't know. <sighs> Yeah, man. I like the burps. I like being out there. Yeah, maybe we'll have um, Chris Irons Hell yeah. back on because there's a lot of news in the financial world right now. Like you have this, um, what do they call it? The ape army. Mm -hmm. The people that are buying AMC stock and they're hanging on to it, fucking over the hedge fund managers mm -hmm. who are shorting the stock, basically running stories saying, if you got it, let it go. Sell, sell, sell. He's got a lot to say about that, actually. Great. I well, love, yeah, we got to get him back on. We already have a list. We don't want to prematurely yeah. say, but we have a list of great guests for July. Oh, yeah. We have a crazy list. Yeah. If you thought Ed Calderon, you know, I mean, he, he, I know his episode's getting great reviews. It's just like, get ready because he's like the one first domino that's. Yeah. And before we get to the next subject, I just thought about this, and there's no uh, there's no jab news in today's episode, mm -hmm. but somebody sent me, sorry, I forgot who it was, and I get a lot of stuff, which I appreciate people sending it, keep sending it, I'll get to it when I, when I can, I'll read it and I'll bring it up. It was a peer-reviewed study, supposedly, <clears throat> um, haven't verified if it's peer-reviewed, but mm. th to sum it up, for every three, okay, for every three people that the jab saves, uh -huh, right, okay. al allegedly, for every three people that the jab saves, it takes away two people mm. if you know what i'm saying yeah man and this is officially on patreon only we're over the teaser mark this is you know it's going to be on youtube but just in a private link so only patrons will get that so i'm kind of weaving my way even still around that verbiage but yeah and that was based off of like a, a hundred i think it was based off of a per capita of x amount i think it was a hundred thousand um yeah for every three it saves it gets rid of two from the adverse effects, now we know more of these heart conditions that are coming and, out. And, I mean, a lot of people say that um, many women are experiencing, like... Menstrual issues. Yeah, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Some, you know, it might be some tinfoil hat type shit. You know, I got my hat right here. <laughs> like, sterility. Like, they try to make people sterile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and for all the fellas out there, if you got unvaccinated sperm... You got non-vaccinated sperm. In the future, man, that, man, our shit finna be worth gold. Yeah, you better go save that shit, put it in a bank. <laughs> we got to get, you know, fellas, you better start have your little jar in the fridge. Let your woman know that ain't milk. And because uh, you might need that for the future, man. You might save humanity. So so should we take one of them video calls? Oh, you about to go. In, yeah, let's go into this. The, the Korean. This will be quick. Yeah. The white boy to think he Korean. I don't know who it is, and I didn't even want to look it up because I didn't care, but Ollie London, very, apparently a very popular, highly followed influencer, transitioned. So this is called, what would it be called? He said he's transracial. Transracial, that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> um, My mom anyone online as british because i i identify as korean that's just my culture that's my home country that's exactly how i look now um and i also identify as jimmy and that's my korean name but uh not only that i just i know it's a little bit confusing for some people nobody's ever come out as jimmy or korean but um this is something that you guys know if you've followed my journey for the last eight years i've really struggled with identity issues with who i am you know or anyone on so what is the we need like a psychologist or psych psychiatry person absolutely to to para que lo califiquen este way like okay este way está chisqueado totally like, like está malito like we're living in a day and age where you can't just say hey man this motherfucker got mental issues but i really am curious like if you're a white male who grew up in england right he's from london he says and what would possess a person? Like, what kind of brain damage? What kind of uh, trauma? What kind of condition mm -hmm. would lead you to go get your eyes surgery to, so you could start looking Asian? And then he still has his little British accent. Yeah. He's like, I now identify as Korean. <laughs> He's trying really hard. I mean, damn, son. What the fuck is going on? It's 2021. I'm so confused. <laughs> and so was he. I'm so confused. Or she or I whatever mean, he identifies as. I'm probably about five years ago, you, you'd have just been like, yeah, this person, cuckoo. 
Yeah. And now you're like, you have to be respectful. You have to be inclusive. You don't want to be labeled a bigot. I, I, let me find out you transphobic, Rob. Uh, you know, you, <laughs> I don't really like labels. You could probably put all sorts of labels on me, but um, it's what it is. Yeah, so if you don't go along with this type of shit, they'll label you trans, transphobic. And that's the last thing you want to be labeled in June. <laughs> Uh, not in june player i uh i added to to the list here on the papers the last one is the it, this, the third sheet of paper uh-huh. is the best resignation letter in the history of resignations from a job wow okay so um the story the story is is it on the notes for today at let the me beginning? see the, if the story notes um okay yeah anti-cop protesters no no, no before that one i think oh right before that Okay, dude quit school district over white privilege propaganda with the greatest resignation letter of all time. Yeah. All right. So this is Tom McGee, program director of the Manchester School District, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. And he CC'd uh, everybody from the superintendent, HR director, and the board of school committee. And he put this all out on Twitter. So if you guys want to want to find it, who posted that, Chingo? What's the... Uh, actually, it's... Uh, at uh-huh. Keep... N H, granite, grant, grand, granite, 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 sepa. You gotta look it up. But but you know what's interesting about New Hampshire? Um, uh, one of my best buddies, uh, from college, he um, we started DJing together. We did some mixtapes mm-hmm. together. He made he like designed my first website. Anyway, he's a teacher in New Hampshire, and he told me some interesting stuff about New Hampshire. Like um, all the presidents always go there because it's like a really decisive swing state just based on their electorate numbers and mm-hmm. stuff and also that there are some uh there's like a group of people called free staters i don't know if they're like libertarian people mm. but they made a commitment f- to where x amount of, of those free stater people are going to move to new hampshire like they'll commit to move their family to new hampshire so that they can vote a certain way and they can ensure I almost feel like they want to secede or something. But anyway, mm. that's neither here nor there. It's Interesting. Just, it's just some trivia about New Hampshire. So if you want to skim through that maybe and read some of the more more crucial parts of it. What's the good paragraph? Oh, my God. He put all in pronouns at the bottom? Bro, you got to... Well, you got to read... Just read a little bit from the top and then... All right. Here we go. He said, human wedgie McGee. <laughs> he called somebody a human wedgie. <laughs> Tom McGee. This is two Tom McGee. I don't know. I hereby resign... As 21 CCLC site coordinator in light of the Frankfurt School, Manchester School District's endorsement of the dehumanization and hatred of white people as evidenced by their dissemination of the imbecilic white privilege curriculum presented by the intellectual titans at Learning for Justice, an organization founded by America's eternal arbiters of truth and morality, the SPLC where senior fellow Mark Potok's office is decorated with celebrity charts of the declining percentage of white people in the U.S. and Europe. Despite despite MSD's inability to abide by its own anti-harassment policy and the complete lack of respect and procedure MSD is owned in return, I will honor my obligation to provide two weeks' notice. Surely, though, in the interest of the greater good of humanity, MSD will unburden itself of my unendurable whiteness by exercising its discretion to, quote, excuse an employee from such notice and relieve an employee from his or her position immediately. Whoa, seriously? His or her? OMG. Wow, just wow. I can't even. How is Manchester School District still operating on this archaic binary? And here's interesting. At the top, what he put in light of the Frankfurt School crossed out Manchester School. So the Frankfurt School is the school of thought where the ideology of critical theory first was born in Germany and then it came over to the U.S. Anyway, we carry on. Here we go. Oh, where, oh, where is the equity? As a trans-feminine, spectrosexual, non-libidoist, Subaru Forester, Basset Hound hybrid with a mixtape of surgical errors for genitals, I am non-binarily outraged at Manchester School District's stunning failure at inclusivity of soft, butch, stone, butch, pan-romantic, gender-dormant, cupiosexual, trigender, polygender, demigender, and left-of-gender peoples, and I call for the resignation and immediate gender reassignment surgery of <laughs> Superintendent Goldhart, Chief Equity Officer LMAO, Steady, 
and all other district administrators and board of school committee members responsible for this wanton toxicity that, though obviously acceptable to treat mere cis-normative whites with, is supposed to be spared those that share fellowship in the cultural revolution, adopt abstract and performative identities, and list pronouns after their names. How absolutely dare you slash yours slash yourself. In closing, I wish the Trotsky disciples at MSD nothing but failure in their ongoing quest for civilizational degradation. I leave you with the only verbal response befitting any attempt of anti-white indoctrination. Fuck you. <laughs> Diversely, equitably, and inclusively yours, Daniel Con Cannon. And then he listed his, pro- <laughs> then he listed his pronouns, which is about a hundred. Literally, oh, that's, that's got to be like 100 pronouns. That needs to go as viral as possible. That is the best letter resignation ever. This needs to be framed. It does. Now, let me just point out, I know it was wordy, and I know listening to me read is probably boring as fuck. However, I just want to point out a couple really cool things. So, number one, how he called them the Frankfurt School. I love that. Um, how, what, what's the word, man? How he's like antagonizing them, where he's just kind of like being sarcastic. Like passive aggressively? Yeah. And, and then of course all the funny shit where he just called himself like, "How dare you," blah blah blah, pan romantic, gender dormant, cupiosexual, trigender, polygender, demigender, left of gender. And then uh, at the end he says, "I wish the Trotsky disciples at MSD." He's basically calling them like Marxists. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Subaru Forester. What a nice little line in there. Yeah, great, crazy shit, man. That's that was good. That's what you got to do these days, man. Well done. Yeah, bravo to that guy. Well done. That's how you got to do it. Well, add him to the, to the guest guest list of and podcasters. I, yeah, and uh, great idea. And I would advise everybody out there to practice their struggle session apology. You know, if you ever get called out for some shit, just be ready to let motherfuckers know that uh, you will continue to learn, continue to do better. You know, just get that shit ready and make it juicy. For sure. <sighs> Uh, our final story of the day, Chingo. You're gonna love this. I don't know how much of this. Oh, fuck it. We'll play as much of it as possible. We got plenty of time. So there's this uh, group. It's an anti-cop protester mm-hmm. uh, who's basically holding this councilwoman from, I believe, Minneapolis uh, hostage in the parking lot of her car. Him and a group of people surround her car, don't let her leave, without signing a list of demands that they have. <sighs> so. I got some of the videos. It's a very he, and she's a liberal councilwoman. Yes, actually, she's the very first, according to Wikipedia, uh, transgender black council lady, councilwoman. So it used to be a guy. Yes, a biological man. Yes, okay. yes. You gotta be careful how you say that shit. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Run him over, son. She refuses to say she's going to support the community. Three days before I get out of here. I got to it might be three days. In front of my fucking car like he's holding it down. Like this ain't like this ain't fucking white supremacy. Like the fuck here. Like, man, I can't believe this. Shit. There you go, everyone. Um, Andrew Jenkins, city council member, paid $125,000, giving more money to the police, not doing anything or passing any legislation, saying that I'm, that I, the person that's, that, you know, that's been out here with the people trying to get the legislation passed, is upholding white supremacy. You heard it here, folks. Hot it off the fresh. Bruh. Well... <laughs> Minnesota and Minneapolis, man. Y'all got to tighten up. Y'all got to get y'all shit together. Not only do you have Ilhan Omar, not only like... Look, I'm all for refugees and immigrants. But let's just be real. This is the Patreon episode. Let's just keep it real, man. Minneapolis arguably has been like... Has a big, large influx. Like overrun of like refugees of a certain type that kind of want... Uh, what's the word, man? Um, what is that? Sharia law? What is it? Sure. Well, go ahead. What is that law? Like the Islamic Sharia law? Yeah, it's like you get. You know, I love my Muslims. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I love my Muslim people. But Minneapolis and, and, and Minnesota, the state of Minnesota, it's just showing so many signs of chaos, and you see this chaos everywhere. You're seeing all types of crazy shit popping off uh, in Oakland. I believe it was like um, some type of police officer. He said, this is like a crisis in Oakland. Um, 
you know, with, with policing and just the community, like people just acting a fool, like just doing whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> So they teach in CRT on the short buses, I see. He's just a Twitter oh. reply. <laughs> Twitter replies. Yeah, man. Like, think about it, bro. This is some real shit. What percentage of this, like, fuckery that mm-hmm. we're seeing, like, this guy, you know, um, being so such an activist, um, holding the person hostage in their car, like, blocking the lady's car, forcing her to sign some paper. What percentage of these folks got some real mental illness, man? Most of them, I would say. Like, we're, we're just glossing over this shit. Like, we, motherfuckers are just not addressing the elephant in the room. Like, you know, people are <clears throat> crazy. Uh, here's another video. There's another clip of it. Let's see. Put cup foods out. I don't even know why people still even fucking shop at that shit. She just stated that she would not sign it. We're in negotiations. We're in negotiations. So here's the thing. That's correct, because we ain't asking no more. We're not asking no more, white lady. We demanding at this point. We're not asking. We're done asking fucking shit. We're demanding it now. So why don't you just get back, sit back in your little seat, and do your job and drive? How about that one? How about that one? I know. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you, Aaron girl. I got you, Aaron girl. I got you, Aaron girl. I got right. you. Hey, everybody. So the councilwoman signs this list of demands. It's on a fucking, at uh, the back of a Let Target ad. Let me see. Did she sign it? Oh, it's all handwritten? Yeah, it's just a fucking list of things that they want. What? Where's the police? Well, she was there supporting a rally against police. For, she was there for a photo op, essentially. And then they turned on her. We want to print? That's so stupid. And the date. We need a um, and date. Okay. I saw somebody had a George Floyd uh, poster up. So here's my honest question. Anybody listening from Minneapolis, Minnesota? Now, all my sources in Minneapolis are are just sending me stuff of like, oh, drive by here, more crime there, homicides are up, police can't handle shit. Uh, shit's just, you know, murder rates are through the roof. However, these people feel like the cops are a problem um I, again i don't know enough about you know is there some kind of um what's the word bad police activity that i just don't know about that i mm-hmm. haven't heard about but i mean all these people out there putting all this energy it's like so what is what are the cops doing that's bad like what's going on are they going around beating people up are they shooting innocent people uh, i mean if i had to guess i guess we're just speculating here they just want to get rid of them they're just they want to be total it sounds like they want total anarchy right mm. so I actually i'm going to bring up the full video just we're going to play the first minute or so of it it's like he, he facebook live this whole thing for 23 minutes this, this is guy. the activist this guy. is the main leader of this activist group right and uh i'm just gonna play a couple of the minutes right here real quick chingo like you this is how it all started Look at this white guy in front of the, the car. God, in front of the kid. Oh, and listen to her. <laughs> you. I love you. He's a little crash dummy like white boy. Like you see me run down here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen. I got a burger sitting on the table. I got a whole margarita that I had to like <laughs> suck down in like five drinks. Like, <laughs> suck down in like five drinks. <laughs> She should have ran them on. So here we are. <laughs> we're out front line park. Yeah. And that's, that, so those are his, they're calling him his minions, this guy's minions. That uh, ran, I guess he was, you know, calling and saying, hey, you know, this councilwoman's here. She's just trying to have a photo op, trying to be on our side, talking about anti cops. So she can't, obviously, she can't call the cops. Mm. Hmm. Hey, man, you're never going to be woke enough. No. So this lady is a black trans woman, and she's being eaten up by the left. She's a black trans woman that's anti-cop, and they got her car surrounded, and they're forcing her to sign some paper. And they got the the crash dummy white boy. He's he's the one that's going to get run over. Idiot. He's just standing in front (laughs) of the... He's in front of the fucking Kia Soul bumper. (laughs) So according to Wikipedia, Jenkins is the first black openly transgender woman elected to public office in the United States. Mm. And even that person is not quite woke enough for these people. You'll never be woke enough. So you might as well 
you know, like, like I, I don't know, if I, I don't know if I said this yesterday, but like these days, if you're voicing your opinion about politics and current events, you're gonna be taken out of context. You're gonna piss off half the crowd, um, you know. So you might as well speak provocatively because they're gonna take you out of context either way. Yeah. So anyway, what do we have here? It's kind of we stories. have some questions from the Thea. We do have some. I'm trying to pull those up right now to get them in order. Um, there was a story that I didn't put on there, but there was a this was yesterday in Harris County, uh, a dad caught a peeping tom mm. in the window of his ten year old. Oh my god. He, she screamed, he saw, the dad saw, he ran out, the guy was mid pulling up his pants, apologizing, uh, runs, apologizing. yeah, ru- starts running and the mom and the dad, uh, follow him across the street or like catty corner to the house to a gas station. The dad goes in to call the cops. The man starts wrestling with the wife, manages to take her gun away and points it at the mom. And as he does that, the dad comes out of the store and puts five holes in the in the perpetrator. Oh, so the dad had a gun too. Yeah, they both had guns. Um, but <sighs> the the guy the guy's uh, in stable condition. The perpetrator, the 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 peeping tom. And now people are talking about how the parents might be on shaky grounds because they pursued the assailant who was unarmed. So, but because it's Harris County and Texas doesn't, I mean, most people don't fuck with you know pedophiles of any sort. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I want to update on that story. <sighs> wow yeah <sighs> Can you so the imagine? people so the people that said oh the parents are on shaky ground were they taking the side of the perpetrator they weren't taking the side of the perpetrator they're more criticizing the parents for having not shot him on their property yeah they should have did that and follow well, i guess what is it the castle the castle law or the castle yeah. whatever the castle doctrine yes yeah yeah so, yeah, why didn't they shoot him right there on a, on a yard? They said they didn't want to kill him. They wanted him apprehended and taken care of by, you know, they were mm. like real fucking, you know. That's what you fucked up. I know, I know, but we'll see what happens Because guess him. what? That shit could have ended up real bad for that lady. Yeah, she could have got, if he hadn't come out of the store, he could have shot her. And then he wrestled her, and why hadn't she shot him yet? She didn't want to kill him. She just got wrestled, wrestled, her, her gun got wrestled away. It did. Uh, Being just my mother's way. So we have Jesus Avila has a question. You want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Jesus Avila from our Patreon says, Hey, Rob and Chingo, I'm recently starting to work out again. I'm five years removed from playing high school football and being in good shape besides diet changes. What other advice would y'all give to help burn fat and rebuild any lost muscle? You want to go first? This is like a super chingo chat question, but I like it. So if people, people listen to the RPT on this far, patrons anyway. Um, here's, here's the truth. You have to just start strength training. There's no specific, uh, you can't just target, you know, fat somewhere. You can't just say, I want to lose, you know, some belly fat, so I'm going to do X, Y, Z. You just have to start, start strength training, have muscle, adapt, have your body adapt to that strength training. And the more your body tries to get stronger, it's going to just start burning fat. It's a very slow, slow process. It's something that people don't want to hear. It's something that I don't want to accept when I want to get into better shape, but that's what it is. Yeah, but you like, you like strength training. I love strength training. Yeah. yeah so. There's just times that like now, like with the, with summers, it's always hard, you know, between camps and, you know, with podcast and I do other stuff as well. Getting to the gym has been almost... <laughs> almost impossible so we have a setup at home so again the, the second thing i would say is make it as easy for yourself to strength train get a barbell get some plates get some uh, kettlebells and knock it out wh- wherever it makes it most convenient for you because otherwise you're just not going to do it and then you're going to slip you know further into uh, the opposite direction yeah so um this one scott adams uh principle is systems not goals and what that basically means is you know, we've been trained and taught to set goals like, man, I want to uh, I want to drop 10 pounds by this. I want to gain this. I want to be able to bench press that uh, whatever people's quote unquote goals are. But um, Marisol gets tired of me every time I'm like, she'll be like, hey, so what's the goal for? I'm like, what's the system? <laughs> She's like, shut up already with your fucking system. She does say that. It's annoying. I know. But to me, it makes perfect sense because it's kind of like, well, my system is follow this menu from this nutritionist or hire this trainer so that you're accountable and you're going to go in that way you you're basically telling people oh i just have a system in place whether it's i take my daughter for a walk in the morning and then we go on a family walk in the evening or i drink a gallon a day or i try to like meet my protein 
needs or I, I do intermittent fasting or I do slow carb, whatever your system is, I feel like that just helps take a lot of the guesswork out because what you don't want to do is be dependent upon motivation to arrive. Totally. So let's just say somebody's an author and they like, they're a writer for a living. They can't do their job based on motivation or inspiration. Like rappers, rappers need to show up to the studio, put on the beat and set that time aside and focus. You know what I'm saying? You can't depend on like, do I feel like it? If you go by, do I feel like it? The the album will never get done. Mm -hmm. The book will never get done. The workout will never get done. The menu will never get followed. No one will ever do those 10 push-ups. Um, it's all about the system. Like my boy Lucky has an excellent system. Uh, Lucky Luciano, he, he posted a video on his YouTube where he said, um, it's the PPP program. He said, prayer is all in the morning. Prayer, read Proverbs, and push-ups. So that's his system, right? Some people might be like, I don't like push-ups. I like kettlebell swings. Yeah. Or I don't believe in the Bible or whatever. But it works for him. And I do that as much as I can too. Uh, he gave really good advice. He said, um, there's only 31 chapters in Proverbs. And if it's the fifth day of that month, then read chapter five. You know, it's just a very basic, easy way of like, reading the Bible a little bit, starting your day off with prayer so you can get your mind right, and and then push-ups. That already is like a win. It's almost like making your bed. Yeah, right. Yeah. It All just, right, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Those micro wins matter. Yeah, because then you create momentum, mm -hmm. and these are things that you can control instead of, I don't know what the word is, like just devolving into this hopeless overwhelm of i haven't done this i can't do that i'm so behind in this i'm never going to reach that goal and that's another problem with goals is that you constantly feel like you're behind the eight ball you constantly feel like you're losing you constantly feel like you're not hitting the mark yeah and that that's not that's no good for your mental um your psyche if you always feel like you're losing so that's why i'm a big uh fan of the systems um concept which is you know set yourself up to where you're just sticking to the plan you're just following the system like oh it's monday i gotta do my kettlebell swings or oh it's wednesday i gotta hit abs whatever the hell your system is uh mine is pretty mindless because it's just hire the trainer do what he tells you to do who, who submitted the question jesus avila i hope you're part of the uh of the chingo chat tier of the patreon so that you can be a part of the, these challenges we're going to come up with and the conversation there a lot of it and i know we have a lot of female patrons a lot of tia agents the as much as the as who are and who are women and and men but I, we both want to really harp on the importance of that because the better you feel the better you look the more confidence you kind of go out into the world with the better off you're going to be yeah i definitely want to have my trainer on as a guest when we do a, a chingo chats or if we come up with a whole new show mm -hmm. uh which is some advice sam Tripoli gave me he said think about what you like to talk about or you want to learn about yeah he's like that's what your shows can be um but i definitely want to have him on because he's really good at what he does he knows his shit uh he's like a guru about all that kind of stuff um i mean i thank him all the time like man thanks bro because he just knows his shit. Otherwise, if I went in there on my own, you know, I just don't know as much. <laughs> I'd be doing like the wrong cadence, the wrong intensity, and so on. All right, we're going to shift here. Uh, on there, who, who submitted our... This is John Lopez, our first video submission. If you have a question, submit your video question. Keep it under a minute, please. No la caguen. Send it to redpiltamales at gmail.com. Your video submission, your question, email it to redpiltamales at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to feature it on the show. All right, let's do this. This is John Lopez. Where's the fucking play button at? Oh, it's in the middle. Ah. Hello, Red Pilt Tamales. This is John from Midland, Texas. I was wondering, Chingo, if you think George Floyd is really in the SUC. Also, I want to know your opinion on Epstein Island. If they're ever going to bring that shit up. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, um, what's your opinion on witchcraft in the music industry? <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna need a ten foot half of my questions. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. I love the honesty. Yeah, I love the laugh at the end. Ready? 
Uh, All right. So the first question he said, do you think George Floyd was really a member of the screwed up clique? Yeah. Um, did you read about it? Yeah, please. Cause I, I, I barely read about that. No, that they would mention it. Yeah. I mean, he, he was from here, from this neighborhood, third mm-hmm. ward. Uh, he was featured on a couple of screw tapes. Um, however, to me, the this is me talking now no, no disrespect to george floyd and his family to me i feel like the screwed up click members are like the main ones that were just putting out albums they were like at the forefront consistent they were doing a lot of freestyles a lot of mixtapes they weren't just like a guest at one point you know so to me screwed up click is more like some people don't i mean there's even debate like is little flip even all the way screwed up click or mm-hmm. he was just young at the tail end of it but you know obviously low kiki esg you know big pokey fat pat people like that so i'm that's gonna who have, i think of yeah i'm gonna have to say no i'm gonna say no i'm gonna have to go with no desantis e- hands yeah uh, epstein island did you watch that documentary have you read about epstein island no i just heard that you know bill clinton and bill gates and a whole bunch of people flew out there and they was getting they was getting doing a bunch of crazy perverted shit with arguably underage chicks and um i don't know man so there's a who, who documentary is that there's Where one is on it? netflix i haven't seen it uh it was funny because i think Marty solar somebody mentioned to me that they were scrolling and there was like a doc there was a hillary doc and then right next to it this next suggested was yeah. epstein it was like who killed epstein yes and then right there yes <laughs> Dude, i was like what the fuck yeah, that was funny. Uh, I have not watched it. Uh, it sounds disturbing. It yeah. sounds like it'll make me sick to my stomach. Um, just the fact that they allowed this dude to to hang himself or get hung in the uh, in the jail. You know, corruption. That's just so frustrating, especially when it deals with like a transnational criminal organization of sex trafficking and and there's so much conspiracy around it. Like. Did he work for Mossad? Is yeah. he like an Israeli spy? Was was it a honeypot scheme where he was setting up, you know, politicians and scientists just to get dirt on them, to blackmail them, to be able to control them, uh, you know, to use them as your useful puppets? So, I don't know, man. It's very disturbing. I mean, of course, the Clintons, every time their name come up, somebody come up missing. Um, Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, so... That's all I really know about it, man. Um, there's a lot of weird conspiracies like, yeah, somebody else just bought the island now. And yeah, yeah, I was hearing that. Did Alex Jones say that he, he's been there or something like that? I don't, I don't he think He flew so. over it or something? I think he flew over uh, it. Yeah, sorry, John Lopez. I don't know too much, man. I know I'm, I'm the, one of the capitanes of the RPT, but you know, even my knowledge is limited, fool. Uh, no, I'm Mexican Morpheus, fool, but... <laughs> witchcraft in, in the music Oh, industry. okay, okay. This one's fascinating. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos and now TikToks of people trying to be like, Rick Ross may be a shapeshifter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, bro, I know conspiracies are fun, but you got you to gotta look at some of this stuff through a different lens. A lot of times, man, it's just a business. Um, they're just more concerned about selling records. Uh, it's not always necessarily some Masonic you know, child sacrificial adrenochrome. So I, I, let me just say this. Maybe I never made it into those circles. Maybe I didn't make it big enough to be in those type of situations. Thank God. Uh, I mean, I've dealt with like Puffy a little bit, you know, a couple of meetings and stuff. Um, me personally, I've never witnessed or really heard any, what's the word, man? Um, concrete something like it was never like pitbull saying hey man when you go over there to uh right. meet with diddy man be careful bro because there's gonna be a goat right there and some blood and a chicken and a santero and you know it was like i never heard anything like that to be totally honest um maybe i'm just ignorant now who's to say that you know who's to say you don't have these back room clicks and some weird freaky shit uh some weird hollywood uh now do they exploit people absolutely um can they be pretty evil absolutely are they promoting negativity and bullshit do you see nothing but fucking twerking on these bat awards now it's like all straight stripper type like legs back here and and booties shaking everywhere and and you know don't get me wrong you know ain't nothing yeah, yeah, wrong with a little yeah. bit of booty sola, sola. but but goddamn, it just seems like 
how are you how are you um banning you know MAGA rappers like Patriot J and, and Bryson Gray and allowing all this Chicago drill music, all this Atlanta trap music, all this like shoot them up, bang, bang, throw away the gat, this throw away, AK, Draco this, and shot that guy, fuck your hood, you know, uh, uh, smoke your homie. You know what I mean? Like they telling on themselves, there's a lot of, I, I would say there's a lot of um, negativity and evil in hip hop and in the music business. They're promoting a lot of bullshit. Um, I mean, Lil Nas X is tonguing down dudes. Uh, uh, allegedly, because you know I ain't see that shit on the BET Awards. Uh, the rapper Mace posted on his Instagram. He said, "The BET Awards no longer is for the betterment of the black community. You know, it's just it's just blatant. Like the the type of music that they're promoting, the imagery. Uh, it's all like shits on fire in the background. It's all like we're victims, and you know, cops are bad, and anarchy. It's weird." But but I can't say that I've seen like rituals or or heard any concrete evidence. I just feel like a lot of that stuff is um, conspiracy. A lot of it is. Yeah, that's the only stuff we it's talk like, about off like, the air. Yeah, it's like Rick Ross is a shapeshifter. It's like, come on, bro. Maybe he's just a fucking dude. You know what I mean? Maybe he's just a dude. He's just a rapper that's trying to stay on top. He's trying to reinvest his money. He's trying to open up more wing stops and subways or whatever the fuck he's opening, checkers and rallies and... Uh, I don't think he's checkers and rallies. You just talked over my joke. I said, yeah, that's stuff we talk about off the podcast, and you kept going. Sorry, bro. Wink, wink, everybody. Yeah, sorry, bro. Uh, all right. I need to be better at listening. <laughs> all these years later? I know. All right. Start from the top. Oh. Make it drop. Uh -huh. Okay. So these are some more questions. From yeah, Patreon. these are the ones from uh, our Patreon. All right. Brian says, question, Chingo. Any pushback from Texas rappers now that they know you've been red-pilled? Uh, I thought I answered. Oh, yeah, I did You answer. did answer on here. I said... A lot of them voted for Trump, too, but they won't admit it. Which is true. It's very true. Very true. Very true. I know personally a handful off the top of my head, but they just leave me out here in the cold, man. <laughs> they just got me out here catching all the fucking arrows. Johnny Sepulveda says, any plans on making your way back to ATL? By the way, a while back may have been back in season one. I had the show playing and my daughters, five and two, heard a bit and y'all were like, I'm red-blooded American. Yeah. They always say, yeah, like we that. Now. We can't take credit for that. Yeah, that's some Hodge twins shit. That's the Hodge twins. Uh, let's see. Question, El Rey de Foreplay. This is from Luis Rivas. How do you feel about this up-and-coming album drop? Do you think it will solidify your true fan base, or do you feel it might get some pushback from Raza about your patriotism? Producer OG Rob, can you touch on the shooting in Chicago and how BLM has been silent about it? Uh, thank y'all both on the content. Um, so my question was, well, I have a single dropping Sunday, 4th of July. Um, I mean, it's a different sound. Um, you know, I always like to reinvent. Um, I've never really tackled this subject of being pro-America. So I'm just really just anxious and curious to get feedback. And I think even some of the haters will like it. Yeah, I'm sure they will. They won't let you know, but they'll... Yeah, they'll dig it. As far as the shooting, I think uh, if that's the one with the Puerto Rican couple, we did touch on that. Uh, and you, I posted a, a clip on YouTube that you went pretty, pretty in depth about the idea. I know some people were saying some crazy shit on the comments in yeah, that video. Yeah, dude, they said that the boyfriend accidentally shot the girl. Yeah, uh, I didn't read anything about Man, that. Man, the way homeboy explained it, it might have been, it might have had a little bit of truth to it. But then the other guy shot the guy, right? Yeah. So maybe they heard a gunshot and they're like, okay, we got to shoot these people because they're shooting at us. Mm. So I don't know, man. I really don't know. Maybe people in Chicago might have more info. But um, I mean, even, even Lori Lightfoot, you know, she acknowledged it, that, that, that that's what happened, even though she didn't, she didn't say anything other than that's just uh, a weekend in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't even have to be Juneteenth. It was just a weekend in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know. We talked about it. That's all I know. I know people are saying other parts of that story, but maybe we'll find out some more about it. Mm -hmm. Tim Dominguez says, what do you think about Lucky Luciano's The Christian Album? Just heard it on Pandora on your channel. I think that kind of album needs to be promoted more. Bye to the world. It sounds like he's been red-pilled. What do you think? Oh, uh, man. First of all, his real name is Christian. So the title alone already is pretty genius. Yeah. Um, gifted rapper. Uh, he stayed on the subject, uh, which is hard to do. Like, how do you make a whole album where it's like 
you go from just being, you know, the way we all would rap about, you know, jewelry, girls, women, money, cars, blah, 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 and make it all about like, you know, glorifying God. That's not easy to do, in my opinion, and make it sound good and make it rhyme and make it touch people. So um, I'm proud of him. Um, and he had hard lyrics, too. Like there were still metaphors, like the bars are still there. It's, he's still bringing some heat. There wasn't it wasn't soft or corny. It wasn't lame. You know, I, I think it was great. Elizabeth Corona says, so we want to know, will you ever be a guest on the Two Trail Show? What is that? I'm not familiar with it. I'll have to look it up. And if that's something that maybe Elizabeth runs, <laughs> then maybe we'll figure it out. Maybe, you know, you do need to do at some point a run of uh, guesting. We need to get back here, line up people that I'm sure that I know I've seen want to get you on shows, depending on not just depending on the size of it, but you do need to do your own media run, talking about your podcast, talking about the music, talking about other stuff, and just to have new ears kind of cross pollinate that way. Yes, um, we need to figure out a way to promote the fact that we're open to that. Like, you know. It, What's the word? Like, uh, email us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that. We'll do, do more of that. You know, you can talk about that on, on the stories on Instagram if you want. Um, and then we'll talk about it on the podcast so that people start hearing like, hey, Chingo's doing a media run of podcast mm-hmm. guesting. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the summer, we can set up, you know, whether it's right here or whatever, where I just run it and you do your episodes, you know, half an hour to an hour or whatever. And Great we'll bu- idea. And book a couple of them and, and start, you know, talking to new audiences through other podcasts. Cross-pollinate. Yeah. For sure. That was the questions, man. Uh, we're going to try to do this every week, um, at least on one of the episodes, whether it's, you know, RPT or it's very uh, Chingo Chat oriented. You know, I'm sure we'll post about it in the in the Patreon of what the questions are geared towards. Because like the very first one was very Chingo Chat heavy, which was mm. great. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be political. Like it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Just have mm-hmm. fun with it. Well, great. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. RPT. Episode number 67. Dude, we're already on season six. Dude, six months. We're officially at six months. We're halfway through the dozen. Uh, Years? Of season. Months? <laughs> halfway through the dozen of the year? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, it's because it says season six, so I saw the six. Never mind. <laughs> Don't worry about that part. Six, six, six. Oh, man, there you go with that. There you go with that devil shit, Rob. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, spreading the word, uh, keeping us on there. All the patrons, patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. I, I hit the road tomorrow because uh, we're recording this. So what the hell's today? Wednesday. Today's the 30th. Yeah, Wednesday the Today's 30th. Wednesday the 30th. So tomorrow I got to shoot the Dallas. Uh, I think by the time this airs, mm-hmm. might be too late. But I have a, I'm, I'm doing a set in a comedy festival. But anyway, I'll see you guys really, really soon. Ontario, California, we added a show. Oxnard, California, a few tickets left. And of course, you know Texas is going to sell out. We have Waco coming up, Midland coming up. Phoenix just got added July 25th. Very excited to meet you guys after the show, get some feedback, and get some laughs because we need it. Thank you. Y'all take care. Peace.